and uh, uh, I I normally use this kind of octagon, which is kind of a you know something that can be repetitive, that is like a modular thing. And because they are prefabricated panels, so you can assure that those are those are correctly fabricated by by yep. who have been trained properly, right? So when those are issued to communities, uh, we have these uh, system of uh, supervisors who like who are paid by the household who go and help them to put it all together. And because it's that particular form, and because it's got to fit onto a, a plinth, automatically everything is done right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. a system of control over everything. And then we have a system of getting WhatsApp uh, uh, images that can be checked. And then the roof also is a prefab roof that is kind of opened up like an umbrella, bolted down. Yeah. And because it's structured in that way, because it's all, uh, it's a kind of combination, if you like, of tradition and, and uh, uh, you know, contemporary innovation, if you like, because nobody had ever done this prefab bamboo work. And because we were yeah. able to do it, so this has given us a lot of uh, uh, possibilities of making sure that, that quality is there and it can be put up very fast and it can be transported. Yeah. So I think with the, if we want to, and architects are the best ones for working with these things. I keep on saying this, I don't see many young architects working in the humanitarian field. Okay. Because I think, I don't think that your, your universities encourage you very much on that, and maybe that should also change. Because yeah. not, the humanitarian architect, architect doesn't mean only disaster affected people, it means people who become homeless, People who are, uh, you know, the conflict-driven um, uh, communities, who are, um, and you know, refugees, with all kinds of people, 